Hey everyone, so I'm back today with another letter gift box. So this is the letter T and I need to make another one because I've got two family members with the letter T. So this one's for my sister and then I'm going to be doing another one for my dad. These are going into the Easter hampers and they will be filled with treats. And you can see there on the side, it opens and you've got lots of space there. So I'll be filling that up later on. These are the last kind of Easter gifts, even though this video is going out after Easter. I've already shared, I'll show you, I've got it here. This is the letter E for Easter, but also my nan is called Eve, or Evelyn, so that's going into her hamper. So they've all got a personalised letter, but this one's been popular because it's also great to just have as a nice happy Easter gift. And um, you can have it as a decoration as well. But eventually you can imagine, you know, if you, you, you know, when I've done the whole alphabet, you can have you know, the word Easter or E.T. If you've got any E.T. fans, <laughs> you could have E.T. Someone's initials might be E.T. or T.E. So, you know, I'm getting there. Bear with me, but they will all be um, on the channel very soon. And if you check out the playlist here, that'll be the Alphabet Letterbox playlist and you'll see everything going into there. But it's a really easy style to do, so let's get started. Okay, so this one's not going to be as, um, I guess, decorated. It's for my dad. My dad's a massive supporter, loves everything I do, but he's not really going to appreciate a cute bunny and glitter and things like that. So I'm just going to keep his with some nice pattern papers and this green card here. So first of all, we'll make the template. So I've already got my one here. So you want to cut yourself two pieces of five by six all of my letters are six inches tall and they're all two inches wide but the widths will vary and it's the widths that will really um, balance the letter and um, I guess make them all match because sometimes if you if you kept it all six by six some of the letters just wouldn't work that great they wouldn't balance correctly so you'll see for example here having that five inch width and the six inch gives it a better balance okay but of course you can change this once you see how I make them they're very easy to do so a piece of five by six, and then we don't need the scoreboard for this. So first of all, you want to come down the long side, so the six inch side here, and it's one and five eighths. I think I've done this one. Yeah, I've done it at one and five eighths. One and a half, I just felt was a bit too thin. That extra one eighth just again seemed to balance everything. So one and five eighths along that side, and then again, one and five down this side here. And then you just want to join that up like so. This is the template, so it doesn't matter about the pencil marks and so on. Then along this side here, you're going to come in at one and a half on each side. Let me just check. Yeah, so just pull that down a little bit. So I'm just marking one and a half there. And then you can just stay there and then come in and do three and a half. But I actually like to physically do one and a half from each side because sometimes the width of this might be slightly under or slightly over the measurement you think. So if you just do one and a half and then go to three and a half, this side might not quite be one and a half. It might be slightly less, might be slightly more. So I like to do the measurement from each side. And again, just along the bottom here, one and a half, and then again, one and a half. And then just join up those lines. That's it. Okay, and then you're gonna remove all of that section and all of that section, and you will have your template. So I've already done that, cut those pieces away. And now I keep this with all my other letters, and then I just need to draw around that each time I want to make that letter. So I've got my two pieces here, although I only need one because I think that one is, was that a correct one or did this one go wrong? So I did cut quite a lot. No, that one looks like perfect. Yep, so we'll keep that one. That can go back in my scrap. So and I'll use this one. So now with my template, I sit it over my piece of five by six card. Make sure you've got your corners right up. And it should be flush with the bottom here and then all you've got to do is draw around there it's nice to use make your template with a thick card so this is a 300 gsm because then it's got a little bit of a, a thickness to it so your pencil can you know easily draw around it now when you cut this out you want to cut the pencil away because you've obviously made it slightly bigger by drawing around it so i'm just coming in to the or in this case to the left hand side there of the pencil and just come all the way up to that join like so and then again you can see better here i'm just coming in so i'm removing that pencil line until you get a nice cut and just repeat that on this side okay so you should now have two letters 
So just like the other letters that I've shared, I like to write on these. You cover all of this with pattern paper, but it just makes it easy for me to show exactly what pieces for what in the tutorial. So if I take my letter here, this piece here is going to be for this top piece all down the left side and the base. Now, all of them are three inches wide, just across, just like all the other letters. So three and this piece is three by eight and three eighths. Along that long side, you're going to score at one and a half and five and seven eighths. And then along the three inch, you're going to score at half and two and a half. And then if you just, so you've got your half inch tab at the bottom, just pop top and then bottom. And then just up at left side and base on that one. And then this piece, again, it's that three inch wide. So you're scoring at half and two and a half. And then this one is eight inches. So just a little bit shorter than the other one. And you're going to score at half an inch, two and one eighth, and three and five eighths. And then with the half inch tab at the top, you want to put top and then bottom. And then here I put right side. So it's just everything coming up here and here and here. Yeah. And then the last piece, again, three. So score at half and two and a half. And this one is by seven and one eighth. And this one you're going to score at half an inch and then two and one eighth. And then with that half inch tab at the top, I've just lightly marked keep, keep and keep on those kind of three side pieces because that's the opening. And I've put their side opening and then I've just put top. So it's going to be along this bit and here. And again, if I bring this in just so you can see, that's the side opening there. OK, so that's all the scoring. So you want to get those all now folded and burnished. So first of all, we've got the piece that's the left side and base. And just along one of the long sides, over each of the folds here, or the score lines, just cut a little triangle so it just takes out a wedge and then pop a wedge on the end of that one there. All of these half inch pieces within the score lines, you now want to turn into little tabs. So again, just popping a little triangle over there. And then with this corner here, I'm going to cut on an angle there remove that square completely and then just cut another little wedge off there so if you find it easier to cut up the score line first and then just cut a wedge, wedge away there so again just cut up that's going to remove it completely which is what we want to do and then just cut a little wedge you basically just want every piece along all the sides here to you know be its own little tab so again if you want to just cut up the score line like so and just release it there and then cut across and then again, with that one there, and then come down this side. I'm going to go back to doing a little triangle because it's just a little bit quicker. And then that one there. So now if I lay that one down, you see that shape we've got. Then the one that's the right side, I've got the top and the bottom. Leave the one with the side opening till last because you'll do that one just a little bit differently. So again, along the long side, just going to cut a little wedge off there. And then over that one. And then this one here, we want to turn into a wedge. So just remove all of the corners there. Once you've made, you know, a few of these, it becomes very easy to do. Like so. And then just on the end there. Okay. And then with this one here, so you want to just cut straight, first of all, along this side where we've got, you know, the, the opening and just remove the squares in the corner. So don't cut a wedge off just yet because we want this to wedge itself closed. So we want it to be a little bit more snug. OK, and then again, I'm just going to cut down the score line there, but I'm just going to take it off of the side where we've got the long piece here. So just keep these three so they're just you know straight coming around there and then again i'm just going to cut down but i'm just going to take a little bit off of that side so just leave those like this for now and then when we go to put it together you can then take a little bit off if you feel you need to in fact we can take it off of that side because that's not going to make any difference to how it closes but it's these corners here that are going to kind of make it nice and snug and keep it closed okay so next we need to start gluing this all down. So take one of the letters and you're going to start with your left side and the base. 
make sure you've got your top at the top so it's got no tab the tabs at the bottom and this is going to stick these are all going to fold in it's going to stick along here all down here and then along the bottom there so i like to just do each piece at a time i just think it's a bit easier and just gives you more control if you want to just add the glue to all of that and then lay it all down you can but i like to do it this way so i'm going to sit it down so i can see both sides of where i'm sticking it if you use a liquid glue you've got a little bit of wiggle time and i just want to make sure that i get it right up to the edge there and then when that folds around, you see I've got a nice right angle in that corner there. Okay, now I can just fold this out towards me. And if I need to, just clip it over the top there. Fold that one away and then just add my glue all down here. The cardstock weight I'm using, this is about a 250. It's not quite 300 GSM and it's not like a 220. It has got still a nice bit of weight to it. I'm using the quick grab glue for all of the tabs, but when I go to add the pattern paper, I use the cloud construction glue and that will then start to add some strength to it all and make it a lot stronger. So I'm just then gonna bring it around so I can tuck it back under. And now I can run that all the way along. And then again with this one. And then just bring that one under, spread that glue out a little bit. Again, just bring that around so you've got a nice join. Okay, so we've done this left side and the base. Then we want to take this one, which says the right side. And the bottom here will have no tab because the tab is here. That's how we're going to connect it. And then this tab will be at the top, ready to connect to the next piece. So you're going to do it exactly the same way. Now, some people like to add the glue to this piece, stick that in first and then add this. I actually like to just keep extending it and then wrap it around like I just did the first piece. So I'm going to add my glue along there and then stick this one down. Then we're going to add the glue all the way down that long tab. So it's kind of sticking out just like it did when I've done this side and then I can just tuck it under and I can see there just bring that one out exactly where that needs to go and by doing it like I said bit by bit I just feel I have a little bit more control there we go and then I can bring this one round and again just kind of clip it outside so I can see it and add the glue and then just bring that one back under and work on that side okay so flip it over this way because that's where we started there's the left side and the base and then we've got the right side so then you should have this piece which has the top and the side opening and you can see already now where that one's going to go into there and then we're going to finish around that side so again i like to add it onto the tab And then again, all along that side and just bring that under and you can get in there really easily to make sure it's all secure. So now here you should have had the word keep if you've wrote and done the same as me. So you just, it's a reminder not to stick it down really. And there we have our letter. So I next like to just tack these kind of loose bits down in place. And just make sure you don't pull it in and kind of, you know, distort the shape. Just bring in your top one there just to make sure you're keeping it so you've got nice right angles. So it's quite easy to maybe pull that one down. And you see then you start to, yeah, you just, uh, the shape's going to start to uh, change. So just uh, lay that over the top just to make sure that it was, that it is correct. The bottom one should be okay can't really move that too much and again you can see you could pull that in more so just make sure that that's correct which it is okay and now keep that bit folded out like I have and then we're just going to add glue now to everything to all of these tabs because you're going to stick down that top one and you can do all this with tape as well double-sided tape your red tapes if you would prefer but I do find you just have a little bit more time. And I personally think it's easier using a liquid glue because your red tapes are very, very strong. 
Um, if you stuck that down, you might not be able to lift it back up again. Okay, and then I'm going to start from the bottom. Sit that down and just work it around. You won't be able to get your ruler down there, but you can certainly get it in place and uh, just apply some pressure along that top bit. You can kind of get your finger around a little bit there. You can now rub out your pencil marks on these because you're going to see these tabs. So. Okay, so now when you close it, you'll probably find you can't because you need to take a little bit off here. But you want to take a little bit off so I can see where I kind of need to cut. So just have a look at yours, you'll know. I'm just going to cut a little bit across there and a little bit there and then just try that again. And you want it to... Kind of rub against it when it closes. And you just want to make sure it, there that goes in perfectly. But it should, you should feel it kind of rub against the sides. And you see it's kind of locked in. And then you want that piece to go in as well. But I just wanted to show you the sides for a minute. But if it all struggles to go in together, then cut a little bit more off. So what I'm going to do now is just cut a little bit off of this side. Because all those other pieces I just cut where, wherever really, it didn't matter too much. But with these ones, if I was to cut the same wedge, you'll probably find it would pop open. But now, yeah, that feels like it's going to stay closed. You could also put a little magnet closure, magnetic closure there, Velcro closure, if you want to have that on the outside. You could pop that underneath there. Now also, once I've added my pattern paper, I'm going to cut a little finger pull. Because if I show you under here, you can see there. So it just makes it easy that person to be able to open that up okay so now we need to decorate with our pattern paper so again I've got a template here now the pattern pieces are four and three quarters by six and three quarters no five and three quarters it would be wouldn't it um, yeah five and three quarters by four and three quarters so I put my template together here and it does say four and three quarters by five and three quarters pattern paper template so just as you did your first template, along the short side here, you want to mark with the pencil at one and a half and three and a quarter. But like I said, do one and a half from each end. So one and a half and then one and a half. And again, and then just join those two up. You're gonna come down one and three eighths. So one and three, one and three, and join that up like so. So I'd already done that on this one, so I'm now going to cut this one out because I want to make this my template. So again, just cut slightly in on your pencil line there, all the way up to where they cross. And then again on that side. Okay, so that's my template already. So now I'd sit it on the back of my pattern paper like so, and then just draw around. But I've already done that. So I'll do it on this one and I'm gonna get those both cut out and then you'll stick those onto the front. And before I do that, I will just give you all the measurements for the pattern paper side pieces. So here you will need one piece. Well, all of the pieces are the same width, so they're all one and three quarters. But for the top, this is a piece of four and three quarters. You'll see that's going to stick there. So it's going to start covering all of your pencil, um, all the writing, if you've done what I've did. And then for the sides, these are four and one eighth. So they're going to go down here. If I do it this way, then I know I've got all the pieces and I've explained them. So on these long pieces here. This one here is one and three quarters squared. That's for the bottom. Then I've got these ones, which are one and three eighths. They're for these sides. And then these ones here are one and a quarter. And they're for these sides just underneath. Okay, so I'm going to get all that stuck down.
Okay, so that's all that stuck down. And then I'm just going to punch my little finger pull here. Now, if you've got a punch and maybe it won't fit within this area, then I would suggest just maybe putting the pattern paper on that section and then put it all together and then do it. I prefer putting my pattern paper on when it's all together. But also, if you don't have a punch, you can just cut a little triangle shape or even a square punch, square shape. You could use a dime, run it through your dime machine before you put it all together. Um, but it's just going to make it that little bit easier now for the person to be able to open the side there. So that's the letter T gift box all ready now for me to fill with treats and to add to the Easter hampers, which I think now are finished. These are the last little bits to pop in there. So it's just a nice way to personalise the hampers. I really like doing this. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Those of you that asked for the letter T, um, if you've enjoyed today and you're not subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing and click the notification bell. That way you'll be notified every time I upload something new and check out the playlist. If you want to see more letters, you might be joining you might be just finding this tutorial maybe a year or even two years down the line. By then, I hopefully have the whole alphabet, so you might want to have a look at the other letters there. Take care, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.